A couple of weeks ago, I was working late one night when I suddenly received an email from someone asking if I could identify and value some Lego minifigures for them. Now, this is actually fairly common because I run BrickRanker.com, a website that lets you track the value of sets and minifigures over time. But even though I do know a lot about Lego, this is still a manual task for me because I need to look at the images. Um, most of the time, I know what, what the minifigures are, but sometimes I, I need to look them up. And then finally, I need to calculate the the current value and send that back to them. Now, as a software engineer, I hate doing manual tasks, so I'm always looking to automate anything that I can just to make my life easier. So I spent the last couple of weeks building an AI model that when you give it an image, can detect Lego minifigures. Now, this was like a lot, lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, I definitely spent many a late night working on this. But the end results were pretty incredible. So stay tuned for that later on in the video. So what I was looking to build really is an object detection model. So this is an AI model that's been trained to recognize patterns in images. And from those patterns, it can work out and label objects. So to start off with, I first needed to collect images of every Lego minifigure. Now, when you consider that Lego has produced over 16,000 unique minifigures, this was quite a... Quite, quite, quite a tall order. Now, obviously, I wasn't going to go to Google and right-click and save all, all, of, all of the images individually. That would just be silly. So instead, I wrote a PHP script that would use the Google Custom Search API, make a, a, a request for every minifigure, and then download and save the images that that, that, that 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 request gave back to me. Unfortunately, though, this API has a limit of 100 free requests every day. Now, I didn't really want to pay Google any money, so I ended up just scheduling this script to run once a day, every day. Now, if I had have gone with this method, it would have taken me half a year to collect all, all of the images that, that I needed. I don't have time for that. So it was at this point I decided to just specifically focus on Lego Star Wars minifigures, of which there are 1,389. Now, one thing that was really important was making sure I collected quite a wide range of images so that when I was training my model, I could give it the best possible chance of being able to, to generalize and not overfit. Now, what I mean by that is if I'd have only used images of minifigures taken on a light background, it would have been very difficult for my final model to, to detect anything on sort of darker backgrounds. So as you can see here, these are all images of the of the original Greedo minifigure. And I made sure I've got quite a wide range of you know different backgrounds, different sizes, or also, also slightly different angles. Now one mistake I did make early on is that I included images taken from the from the back and from the side of, of the minifigure. Now if I had have included these, it would just it would have meant I would have had to train my model for a lot longer. So I decided for the sake of, simplic of simplicity, I would only use images taken of the front of the minifigure. So after 14 or so days had passed, I'd got all the images that I needed and I was now ready to then label them. Now labeling is by far the most time consuming and, and, and laborious stage of this project because it involved opening up each of the images individually and drawing a box around the minifigure. Now I had to do this because it's, it's basically like telling my model that this specific group of pixels is what you n need to be, be training on because that is the portion of the image that contains the, the minifigure that we, 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 we want to detect. I think I worked out it was taking me two minutes just to do the images for one minifigure. So when you consider the fact I had nearly 1400, it's fair to say this took me a long, long time. However, once I was done doing that, I was now ready for the fun part, which was training my model. Now, for this, I was using TensorFlow, which is an open source machine learning platform. And it does a really good job of kind of abstracting away all of the complex maths that you need to, to train neural networks. And it also gives you pre-trained models, which are, are models that have already been trained to, to detect certain objects. So you can simply just import those and just tailor it to your specific use case. So initially, I only trained my model for 2,000 steps because 
every tutorial that I read online said after 2000 steps, you, put, you should be getting pretty accurate results. However, after training my model for 2000 steps, I was getting an average accuracy of less than 0.1, which is like really, really bad because ideally you want to get as close to one as possible. And I, I don't really know why this was. I think it's because I was training my model to, 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 to detect lots of different objects. Whereas all of the ones, all of the, the tutorials I found were only detecting like two or three objects. So I just set it to train for 50,000 steps instead, which my GPU wasn't very happy about. But at least after that many steps, I was getting an average, average precision of around 0.8, which is not too bad, really. So after collecting my images, labeling them and training my model, I was now ready to test it out on actual minifigures that 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 I own. So for this I just set up a simple web web application that would use the feed from my webcam and it would let me detect minifigures in real time. So here I'm detecting the original Greedo minifigure that I I showed earlier. I can swap that out. This time it's the it's the snub fighter pilot SW1256. And then finally I added Admiral Akbar in there. Now I haven't got the best best webcam. It is quite old, so it doesn't fo focus very well, which is why you sometimes it, it kind of doesn't always work. But finally, I can add all of them back in, and yeah, it, it can it can detect multiple multiple minifigures at, at the same time. So yeah, seeing this working for the first time was a really exciting moment. And it made me realize there are so many use cases of this this kind of t technology. It's kind of endless, really. However, this model is uh, far from being being production ready, because as I said, I've only trained it on Star Wars minifigures. So I've still got like 14,000 minifigures I need to train this on. So I'm going to keep working on it. And maybe by the end of the year, I might be able to have something which is ready for for public use, hopefully. Also, as you saw from that video, um, I do want to try and make it a little bit more accurate. My webcam it isn't the best. It wasn't focusing very well, which I think is why it didn't didn't detect the minifigures at some at certain points. But I might consider changing the architecture and seeing if I can increase the accuracy up even more, just to make it even more foolproof. So yeah, before before I started this project, I actually knew nothing about about AI. I never you know you used machine learning in any shape or form. I'd used AI tools in my job, so I kind of understood how they worked. Yeah, so I feel as though before I started this project, there were a lot of unknown unknowns. So I I didn't know what I didn't know about about AI. And even though I've only scratched the surface now, at least now there are kind of known unknowns. So I know what I don't know, and I can, and I can, I can go away and spend time learning that. Because, you know, the whole point of me doing this is... Obviously, I wanted to build something cool, but I also wanted to broaden my skill set. Because if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll, you'll know that software engineering jobs are kind of fa fast disappearing, really, or they're becoming a lot more competitive. So if I want to give my my career a bit of longevity, these, these, these are the kind of technologies that I really, that I really need to be learning. So that I can, you know, make sure that I've always got I've always got a job. So that wraps up this video. If you did enjoy it, please do leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out. I know I've kind of done a bit of a whistle stop tour of all of this, but if you want me to go over anything in more detail, I'll be more than happy to. Just let me know in the comment section. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.